and I have to come to the defense of Andy Rourke, who I think has has been unfairly lumped in with Mike Joyce because Mike Joyce was actually the one that filed the lawsuit. Uh, and I think Andy was compelled to testify, but I spent a day with him a couple years ago and it was a rather sad, uh, uh, day when well, we had an incredibly fun time. We, we drank for about nine hours, but he was doing his East village radio show. And I met him because he was taking the L train in from Bushwick. And this is about four or five years ago. And it was not Bushwick in Brooklyn now is, is the place where, all these, um, in, you know, insufferable, insufferable little children, uh, insufferable hipsters live. But at the time, it was just kind of a cheap place to live. And I said, good God, Andy Rourke is living in Bushwick. That's, that, something's not right about that. And he told me a story about, you know, basically how Morrissey and Marr uh, fleeced him out of, out of all of his money and any royalties. And I, don't, I, I believe that you probably should have fleeced Mike Joyce. <laughs> Because <laughs> anyone could have done that. Uh, not necessarily the case with, with Andy. Definitely not the case with Andy. But he told me this story um, when he was getting on at a stop about five, six stops in from Manhattan. And as you get closer to Manhattan, the train, of course, fills up. If you're on there earlier, you're likely to get a seat. And he's telling me about having a seat and this strap hanger coming one day, holding the pole above him and him looking up and seeing his own face. And he was wearing a uh, Queen is Dead T-shirt with that famous photo <laughs> in Salford at the Salford Lads Club. And he said he wanted to take scissors and just cut it out uh, because he would never see a nickel. He was living in Bushwick in a, you know, not rough circumstances, but certainly not great circumstances. And he was doing a, a radio show on East Village Radio. And then I decided to write about this because I, I went to see a Smith cover band. <laughs> called the sons and heirs well that's true that's true devotion there. <laughs> that's true devotion. Uh, well I, I went to two actually one i went for just to see what it was like and then i wrote a piece about going going on to a a, a cruise like uh, around uh up and down the east river with the same smith cover band um and the singer of the smith cover band was not a particular fan of the smiths he just sounded like morrissey <laughs> oh, that's, so that, that's like a nightmare it's like i don't even like this band i just have to do this yeah, I, he I actually like said, i make good money doing this so. <laughs> He's probably making more money than Andy was. But the, the best thing about it was it was like the Ruddles in the sense that the guitar player is very, very good. They still play. Is an Indian guy who goes by the name of Ravi Mar. Uh, <laughs> and that night that I saw them, the opening act, and I, I like to put it that way because it makes it more depressing. The opening act was Andy Rourke. Uh, as It was DJing. Um, Yo! And so I said to him, I was sitting with him at a bar in the East Village. And putting this question to him, which was, I guess, phrased in a way that was going to, going to, you know, wound. It wasn't intentional. Was going to a bad place, right? Yeah. Well, I said to him, I said, what's it like opening for a band <laughs> that features a member pretending to be you? And he was like, well, I only did it as a favor. And, you know, I, they're, they're nice guys. And, I, you know, it makes me feel like that kind of thing to do it. And I realized that, you know this guy who is such an important part of the band in so many ways. I mean, if there's, I, I mean, so many songs that if you remove that, if you just pull the bass down on the board, mm -hmm. you, you have this jangly sort of bright, fantastic guitar sound, but it sounds incredibly thin with a uh, Rourke on those records. And so I, I just, I thought it was so terrifying and sad that, that this guy is like just sort of walking around these kids in, in, in Williamsburg and, and Bushwick that are wearing Smith's t-shirts and they haven't a clue who this guy is and he's not making a nickel from it.